Welcome to another video from Cardboard East. My name is Jay. I play Asian board games and share what I find with all of you. Today, we're going to talk about every single board game in my collection from Singapore. Now, I want to start with the small publishers first. Uh, first on the list is Per Balls Cat Venture Card Game from a little tiny publisher called Necomancy. That's right, Necomancy. I do like that the theme of the game is masking what is essentially a set collection game. Now in the game, each player is gonna have a number of explorers that are all anthropomorphic cats. So you could have like pirate cat, wizard cat, barbarian cat, rogue cat, spy cat, fencing cat, and you'll be slowly collecting cards. So the more green cards you have, like the more the rogue will score points. Blue cards, the wizard will score more points. And you can lean into those strategies by either upgrading or leveling up your rogue or your wizard or trading out characters for new characters into your party. And while this idea I think is really good, I don't think it's executed perfectly because I'm not sure who this game is for. It looks very approachable. The art is ridiculously cute, but the mechanics are a little bit more difficult and nuanced than I think uh, they are for like a family game. There's a dice mechanic for fighting and battling and while it is fun, I don't think it's really necessary and it kind of slows the game down. I do like the game, I do like the art. I just don't see myself going back to it time and time again. Singapore Dream, the little card game that could. Now back a million years ago in 2018, uh, Singapore Dream raised about 14,000 on Kickstarter. And this is a very typical, like fun, fast, like exploding kittens, like I play a card, immediately get feedback, card game. I play a card, I take that, I get some resources, maybe I get more cards, and hopefully by one point in time I have enough resources or of cards to win the game. And while that is very approachable and appealing, it's not too appealing for, I guess, people who want something a little bit more in their games. But I don't think this is the game that you play for mechanics and strategy. This is the game that you play for the theme. Because this game is all about Singapore. The art is ridiculously cute, and each card references a little nuanced bit of Singaporean culture that you may not get if you're not from Singapore. I think it's fun for a few plays, but I don't see myself going back to it. However, I do think it's a good, like, bar game. You want to have a nice, nice few drinks, laugh, talk about Singaporean culture, then yeah. Up next is Mercat Games. Now, Mercat is a very tiny publisher, and they only have four games, and so you're looking at all four of them here. These I don't think are my cup of tea because well, three out of four of these are all real-time games. And I'm not the biggest fan of real-time games because I like a little less stress when I play games. So I definitely think that these games are not for me. One thing I do like about real-time games is that the best real-time games I found are pretty clear with what you need to do. So every player has a very good idea of what they need to do and how to get there. There's just a whole bunch of chaos happening. Whereas your standard Euro game, it's a little bit sandbox and you can kind of go wherever you want. And while I find those fun, I know some players find that not that approachable and get lost with what they're supposed to do and they don't have any direction. I do think Murakad's business model is great and there's definitely room for that in the board game industry. All their games are very cheap, very affordable, and they're targeted for non-gamer families. So, happy dim sum. It's all about dim sum. You have food that is alive and you want to eat, but you want to feed your other opponents lots of cards and hopefully everyone else gets full and you're not. And that's pretty much happy dim sum. It's very take that, so if you're not in to take that, I completely understand. However, I do find that younger gamers do like that instant feedback. And this is a little bit more targeted uh, for our younger gamer friends. Check out. Now, I don't know if you've ever been into a convenience store in Asia, but wow, are they different. And check out, I think, definitely taps into that. You're going into like some of your favorite snacks that you see from Asia that you will not find in like a North American or European convenience store. Now in checkout, you're constantly rolling dice, trying to get the right number to get the right food, and go to the checkout line, and you're trying to be the first one there so you can get the best like candy or snacks or whatever is there on the extra aisle. After a few rounds, you have a nice little bonus round, there's a big shopping spree! And that's checkout. It's fast, it's fun, but it's not something that I'm gonna find myself going back to again and again and again. Hot Pot Havoc. Now, this is probably my favorite out of the three uh, real-time games. Just because I like that you have a little bit more control. In Hot Pot Havoc, you're trying to build your own hot pot. Each player has their own flavor of hot pot. So someone might have like mala, and someone might have miso, and you're trying to put the right amount of spoons in your bowl. But 
each player has their own unique deck and you could either play like top draw or you could splay your cards out and flip them over one at a time. Now, Hot Pot might not be the biggest thing in North America or Europe, but let me tell you, it is huge in Asia. Like when it gets cold, the moment that someone puts on the jacket, it's Hot Pot season. At least here in Taiwan it is. So while you might think that boiling stuff in water might be the lamest way to cook something, in Asia it is the bee's knees. And Hot Pot Havoc definitely taps into that. And I will easily say that out of the three real-time games, this one is by far my favorite. However, my favorite of the Mercat games is Combo Cone Paradise. And that's because it's not a real-time game and it's about ice cream. And who doesn't like ice cream? I think the art is really delicious. Uh, I, the fact that they chose my favorite type of ice cream, uh, chocolate mint, in there. Yo, laugh at me. They all go together. It's heaven. It's perfection. Perfection. But I like that Combo Cone ice cream exists. Like you're drafting scoops of ice cream, you're putting them on your cones, you're trying to fulfill orders. Now, it's very approachable because the orders that you have to pick from the pile and they're your personal orders and you try to fulfill those as fast as you can. The orders are not shared amongst players, so you build the perfect ice cream cone, someone takes a contract and you're left with some ice cream and you don't know what to do with it. So this one, I think it alleviates that problem. Uh, the biggest problem that I have with it is that the icons for the cards are in the center and not on the sides. So when you splay your hand, your hand goes from this wide to this wide as you have to see everything there. It's called combo cone ice cream because you can actually combo between the flavor and the brand. Now, the problem is that the brand names of the ice creams, while well, they're very cute, like Hagen Days, Jim and Berries, they are kind of hard to tell apart, and I kind of wish they made that a little bit smoother so the combos could be a little bit easier to trigger. Dead Zilla. Now, uh, Dead Zilla comes from 2018, and it's a bigger boxed game. Now this comes from Capital Gains Studios. And Capital Gains Studios is a very interesting publisher because all their games are about money. Wait, wait, wait. let me, let me, let me retract that. It's not about money, it's about finance. So that might be about cryptocurrency. There might be about teaching you financial responsibility. And yeah, hey, it's an important life skill. Don't mock it because one day you'll wake up and you're 40 and you realize, ooh, what have I been doing? Now, Detzilla is a deck building boss battle card game, a la Legendary, if you remember those back in the day. However, instead of fighting Godzilla, you're fighting Detzilla. And only your financial responsibility can save the day. Now, that sounds incredibly dry, but the theme is really just superheroes who look like Batman fighting Godzilla. And hey, everyone likes a good kaiju game, right? Well, in Detzilla, you, Batman, Doc Brown, We'll be slowly gathering cards, building your decks, and rolling dice. To defeat one of the big bad monsters in the game. Now, while some people may not like the luck-driven factor of this, and hey, I'm right there with you, I completely understand. For a 60-minute deck building game, I think it's fine. And pretty fun. The setup is a bit of a bear though, because you have to separate all the decks, and a lot of deck builders do have that setup, unfortunately. But I do wonder what this game and who the target audience of this game is for. Because you have the superheroes, you have the kaiju, that's kind of fun, and then you have this weird backdrop of finance, and I don't know if that necessarily works for me. But if you're at my table and you want to play Deadzilla, I'm not going to say no. Zombie life insurance. Now, looking at this cover, I do have to say that more board games have to go for the movie poster look on their covers, because it's quite awesome. Zombie apocalypse has come. And don't worry, insurance companies are there to insure you against becoming a zombie. Because why not make more money as the world is burning? Literally. Now, before I get into the game mechanics, which I do actually enjoy, I love the satire of this game even more. Because the last few years definitely felt like a zombie apocalypse. And who knew that toilet paper would be a hot ticket item? Now, out of the few games I have played from Capital Game Studio, this one by far is my favorite. It's light and it's fast, and it's a little bit complicated, but I like that little bit of difficulty in my card games. Players are slowly trying to get the most money, or they become a zombie 
and then try to give bites to everyone else to try to end the game as fast as they can. You're building your wealth, becoming a zombie, killing everybody else, so that way you have the most money at the end of the game. And you definitely feel that tension rising as you play that game. Like, I'm slowly playing it, I'm getting my money, I'm getting my money, Tom just became a zombie, and now everything <laughs> is constant mad chaos. Three Kingdoms Redux. This is the oldest Singaporean game in my collection, and it is easily by far one of the best. Now, this is the newer release by Simon and Board Game Rookie, and the box is thicker. Now, you might look at this and be like, Jay, I don't know what you're talking about. It looks like a normal box. Yeah, that's fine. The original release of the game, the box was about like half as high, so it had that oink game feel of like, how am I supposed to get all these components into this box? And now that with comes in a bigger box, you don't have that problem anymore. Three Kingdom Redux is by far the best game about the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. If you really like Romance of the Three Kingdoms, this is the game that you want. Now, if you know nothing about Three Kingdoms or Dynasty Warriors, Dynasty Warriors, then maybe this game might not be for you. One of the biggest problems I've seen other people have with this game is that those who are big fans of the Three Kingdoms and all the lore and history from it, and some players feel like it's not historically accurate, <laughs> I don't get you, man. Like, that's not a problem. Hey, I respect, I respect that, but in terms of gameplay, like, I think it's more fun. People have said that this is like worker placement, work action selection, but really, it's an auction game. And you're fighting for, to take the actions that you want to take. And you will not be able to take all the actions you need. Because you're fighting battles with him, you're fighting battles with him, and you're trying to make sure you have enough soldiers to fight those battles, but then they don't have weapons, so you gotta make sure that they have weapons, and then they have to have food, and you gotta make sure that they have food, and you're trying to make sure you're fueling this economy, fueling your armies, and it's really difficult to see if you're winning or not. Now, you might be able to tell, like, I'm losing this battle for sure, I'm winning this battle for sure, but it's always really difficult to tell who is winning the game. Now, 3D Kingdom Dream Decks is a three-player game, period. But if you have a committed game group and you can get this to the table, it is gonna be one of the best board gaming experiences you'll find. And it's quite shocking that there's a game that's that old that still holds up today. I believe it is on the Board Game Geek Geek Store. So you can actually just buy it there and have it delivered straight to your home. Next up is Overbooked by Random Skill Games. Now, this is the earlier release of the game, and while the art is not, well, sexy, it's very functional and very clear, so I do appreciate that. Overbooked is one of those weird games that feels like a roll and write that's not a roll and write. In it, you're trying to book an airplane and fill all the seats with your customers or passengers. Passengers, but they, they're also customers. I love the theme of the game. I find it integrated into the mechanics extremely well. I like that you're slowly trying to fit everyone in there. You're trying to get couples together, you're trying to get kids surrounded by adults. And I love the fact that you could just boot someone off the airplane at any time and you give them a little food voucher and say, I'm sorry, you got kicked off the airplane. My bad. I do think Overbooked is a solid game. It has been picked up internationally as well. If you do want this game, I do suggest you try and get the later version with all the high class, glossy art, overbooked. Tetris on an airplane. Arach Noir, you're a spider in a dark city and you're a detective. You're there to gather clues and eat flies. And yeah, I don't get that either. I actually like the game mechanics. I like that you roll the dice you have these patterns, your spider has to move in these patterns, and if you can tron your way a certain section, you can create a web and you can capture flies and gain points, and you go from one end to one end, you gather clues, and you can score points that way. I like the mechanics, but the theme, I just don't get. And like every time I've introduced this game to people, they look at me like, what are you talking about? I'm a detective, I'm a spider, what is going on? And I think they could have found a better theme for this game that just would have made sense. You could have just gone full spider, There's nothing wrong with that. You could have gone full detective, There's nothing wrong with that. But detective and spider, I, I don't know. I just don't feel it. And I think the game suffers for that. The game also comes in a pizza box Unfortunately, mine got damaged uh, in the shipment. I'm not the biggest fan of uh, pizza box pizza box games, mostly because it makes me relive my trauma as a pizza delivery boy, but also because, well, these boxes can get easily damaged, like this one did uh, being shipped in the mail. 
overall, I think there are really interesting mechanics here at play, but it's not a roll and write that I'm going to go back to, especially today when there are lots of roll and writes out there. Some are later on this list. Walk and Roll by Singapore publisher Ori Game is the roll and write that you want if you're into roll and writes. Now, the box cover doesn't look extremely sexy, cool, hip, but it really fits the style of game that Walk and Roll is. It's very unassuming. The board itself is really bright and colorful. Players are restaurateurs and you are cooking up a storm, rolling dice, getting food ingredients, knocking them off, and getting lots of combos. This feels like the nice mid-weight Euro style roll and write game. And that's the level where I like my roll and writes. I don't want them too Hadrian's Wall, and I don't want them too simplistic either. Somewhere in between, like walk and roll, is where I would like to be. And I really appreciate how combo-y the game feels. I get this, to unlock this, and this gives me that, and that unlocks this, and this gives me this, and this gives me this, and then at the end of the game you score, you know, 50 or so odd points. Now what separates walk and roll from other golden rights is that extra red die. When you roll the dice, all the players get to use the white dice, whereas the red die only the active player can use. And it creates this fun, competitive nature where the non-active players are looking at the dice being rolled, thinking to themselves, I need chicken, I need chicken, I need chicken, give me chicken, give me chicken, give me chicken. So there's never really a dull moment as you play the game. I also like that there are ways to mitigate the die rolls, and it feels like a very tactile natured game where you're trying to make the best of what you have. And that is walk and roll, what are the best roll and rights from all of Asia? Chop! Now, I don't know if you've ever been to Singapore or not, but when you go, there are these big food court hawker centers. People take these tissue papers, put them on the tables, and that's supposed to reserve the table for them as you go get the food and come back. That would never work in America or Texas, so you just take that, throw it away, and sit down and eat. Sorry. And Chop is a real-time party game where you flip over the cards, you don't want to get doubles, and you have to push your luck, and hopefully doubles don't appear and you can take all the cards there. Or you can keep pushing your luck, doubles appears, and everything goes into chaos and goes back to the deck. You want to get tables, so you could have to score your food. Birds will appear and you have to play your card. I like that the card that you play you either play it face up or face down. It can add to the hilarity because maybe you placed it wrong. I'm not the biggest fan of real-time games, but for some reason, Chop is not bad. But I definitely think it's my least favorite of Aura Games games. Now, if I am going to go for real-time, I might actually go to Copy King. This is a real-time game about probably the greatest thing on this planet, and that's coffee. I say that because I'm addicted. In Copy King, you have all these cards all over your table and you're looking for cream, sugar, milk, coffee to create certain orders and fulfill contracts. The fun is, is that you'll hear, at least in my gaming group, people will repeat the contract out loud and it's really, really distracting. It's like, oh, coffee, two coffee, two milk, two cream, two coffee, two milk, two cream, two milk, two milk, two cream. Take that, multiply it by three or four and it becomes this fun little high energy chaos. That is a good way to start the gaming night. This is a fun little filler. The coffee drinks all look great. The art is not only just serviceable, but it looks good. It has this nice hand-drawn art, and all the drinks are local to Singapore. So if you've never had a Milo dinosaur, you are missing out. Durian Dash. Woo! Durian is disgusting. There, I said it. Revoke my Asian license. Uh, durian is really big in Singapore. And if you go to any of the hotels, there will be signs saying that you cannot bring durian into the hotel. Because, whoo, it stinks. In Durian Dash, players will be either going to the north or south to gain cards. However, they can either go fast and gain one, or go slow and gain multiple cards. However, you don't know how fast or slow the other players are going to be. So while they may go and get like the nice durians, you might be left over with the bad durians, or even worse, the rotten durian. But if you're not, you can actually take your durian cards and trade them off to other people. So yes, there is a little bit of take that, and yes, there's a little bit of fun hilarity as you get to watch people slowly take a lot of bad cards. However, durian dash may sound chaotic, but it's really controlled, and that's what I really like about it.
sure you're set collecting durian and there's different types of durian and it can be a lot of fun looking at other people seeing okay they obviously like these type and they don't like these so i'm going to trade them for the ones that they don't like and take the ones they do like and it's really fun to kind of get into the other player's mind i think our game did a really good job with the arts because all the art is all hand drawn and looks nice so during dash is the deepest of fillers but it's fast and it's fun and i don't think it's going to be leaving my collection anytime soon Plantopia. Now, definitely one of the shiniest and cutest games in my collection, but it is by far the punniest because the puns in this game, whoo boy. In Plantopia, uh, players are farmers growing plants. Plants start at level zero and you want to slowly get them to grow to one, two, and three. You do that by trying to get the weather cards to all align to a particular plant that you want. Once a plant has gone to level three, it gets plucked and put into a basket off to the side where you could slowly accumulate and once there's five you trigger the end game whoever has the most points wins plantopia now this game is cute and very approachable for the art however the game is a little bit complicated for the kiddos part of the friction for plantopia is the iconography now it can be a little bit difficult it's nowhere near race for the galaxy levels but i think after the first game you play which is 20 30 minutes you should be able to grok the game come your second time around. I do like that for the solo play, there are these five different bots that all behave a different way. So there is some replayability there if you're looking for a nice little solo game. And I really enjoyed the simplicity of just playing one action, trying to pull off as many combos as I can, looking at the weather, trying to make sure no one else gets the weather that they need and I only get the weather that I need. So I like that there is forced uh, player interaction there, although mild, it's still there. Combine that with super glossy box, really fun cards, and super cute art, I think Plantopia is a real winner for one of the little gems from Singapore. Mooncake Master. Mooncake Master is a family tile drafting game. I really appreciate the simplicity of the rule set, and I love the artwork. I love how bright and colorful it is. I love the kitschy artwork. I love the production quality of how each individual tile has a little bit of texture to it so you could really feel the quality that went into the production. In the game you are making moon cakes which are these nice little desserts that you can find here in Asia and it creates this nice communal feel to the gameplay. You take your tiles and you give one to your player to your right and to your left and they give them back to you and you're trying to make the three best mooncakes that you can that fit the contract requirements that are out for that particular round. If you're looking for a family game, this is the one that I would recommend from Singapore. Rainforest City. Now, I think Rainforest City is probably the best aura game game. I also did a video of this and you can check out the playthrough here and the review somewhere over there. But I really love the puzzling nature of this. I love that you have to expand the terrain and then you have to populate that terrain with flora and fauna. I love that you have to have plants and you have to have herbivores that eat the plants and you have to have higher scoring carnivores that eat the herbivores that eat the plants. And if there's too many or too little of another, then the whole food chain collapses and you lose points. Now that sounds a little bit brutal, but I love the slow methodical planning nature of it and how you try to make the best of what you get. If you're looking for a puzzly game, I can't recommend Rainforest City enough. And the best part is, is that all the animals, all the plants are all native to Singapore and it really captures Singapore culture and environment and injects it into the gameplay. Well done. Well, we've ignored the elephant in the room long enough and it's time to bring out the big gun. Blood Rage. That's right. Cool me or not, now known as Simon is in Singapore and it is a Singapore board game company. Therefore, an Asian board game. Now, typically when you think of Asian board games, you're thinking of these, these bright, colorful, small box games. You're not thinking of these big, heavy, miniature games. And that's exactly what CMON is. Now, love them or hate them, they have made some excellent games over the years and Blood Rage stands on top of that list and it has stood the test of time, and it is the only CMON game in my collection. I have gotten quite a few in the past, and I have traded them away or sold them, but this one I continuously go back to. I love the minis, love the card drafting, excellent quality game. And I don't know what else to say about Blood Rage that hasn't been said already. Now, I have played other CMON games, and I don't have them in my collection, though probably the one that I regret the most uh, is Ethnos. Ah. I didn't know what I had when I had it. Don't know what you got. 
till it's gone. Shout out to the 80s. But Blood Rage is a quality game that I definitely recommend that you check out. And yeah, it's from Asia. Recommendations. If you're looking for a big, heavy strategy game, then Blood Rage is probably where you're looking for. Now, if you're looking for something a little bit smaller, if you like puzzly games, I'm gonna go with Rainforest City. I think it's better than Cascadia. That's right, dropping the Merlion. Boom! Love Chinese history, you like the Three Kingdoms, you're a big Dynasty Warriors fan back in the day, well then, Three Kingdoms Redux is probably the best game that you could ever have. Now, there isn't a lot of cool combat action like a Dynasty Warriors game, but there definitely has that old 8-bit Nintendo Genghis Khan kind of feel to the game. I'm very particular about the auction games that I have, and Three Kingdoms Redux is by far one of the best. I'm looking for a roll and write? Walk and roll is the answer. You're looking for a family game? Mooncake Master. And if you are into real-time games, I am not, but if they are your cup of tea, well then there are quite a lot of cups of tea here for you to explore. I'll put a link down below in the description of how to find these games, showing you those online stores. If you think the shipping is too much, reach out to those publishers anyway. They might be able to give you a discount or there might be a distributor near you. If you have any thoughts about some of the games here, any questions, please comment below and let me know. Once again, my name's Shay. I play Asian board games and share what I find with all of you. I'll put some links to some playlists that have even more board games from Asia that I think you'll enjoy. See you there.